Welcome back guys, it's Jason with your Hopium Free Crypto channel. Today we're going to look at the bullish narrative continuing on Bitcoin and the booming ecosystem on Solana. So before we get started, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, bell notification icon, hit all so you can see these videos pop up in your newsfeed. Let's jump in. Market cap, $2 trillion. Bitcoin currently sitting around 49,000. It is starting to consolidate above our 50% level. So our, our guide was 47,000. We're getting above that point at the moment. And Solana is our other big one today, breaking into the top 10. However, it has had a, we could probably call it a small rug pull potentially on the ecosystem. But the good news about that is this is always going to happen across all of the smart contract platforms and the earlier you can get this done have the rug pulls have the hacks go on then you can start to clear out some of the mess and clean up the acts of the project so look it sounds like bad news because people are losing money but at the same time it's at around 10 million dollars we'll get to that news article and it is starting to clean up the act and and finding out what some of the problems could be in the ecosystem so solana not much has been affected by that, which is pretty good news. It's holding up re relatively well above the old all-time high. And uh, a couple of other projects, uh, Terra Luna, again, still holding up, but it's just having a little bit of a pullback now, so about 6%, whereas Bitcoin is just holding steady uh, from yesterday's gains. Today, fear and greed is at extreme greed, 76. Yesterday was also extreme greed, 78. And remember last month, 23, we have swung crazily from extreme fear to now extreme greed. And a little note on this extreme fear and greed chart here, we could now start to use another strategy. So I'll go into this in a little more detail, but what I'm looking at here, this is to buy into Bitcoin on the dips. And if you didn't see yesterday's video, make sure you go and check that out after this. There'll be links to it at the end of this video. And like I said earlier in the in the video, hit subscribe, then hit all, the bell notification icon and all so you can see these pop up. So this is to add to your planning in cryptocurrency. And the idea here is, you know, we've gone through and fallen below 20, you can see here, and we had a trigger to buy Bitcoin every time the fear and greed hit 15 or lower. Now that we've started to climb out of this zone, we could adjust some of the filters. And I'm just coming up with these as I was doing some research before I filmed the video. And now that we start to climb past, say, 70, which price could we look to get in at on the drops? And this is going to help with our entire portfolio. You could possibly use these same rules across your Ethereum, your ADA, whichever cryptocurrency you want to use, but go and test it. You know, this is just to give you some ideas. So as we pass, pass through 60 or say 70, if we get a drop into the 40s, so 50 or under, something around there, maybe you'd want to be buying up Bitcoin every time it's underneath 50. And if you just do a couple of tests, go and check that out. It has to go up first and then on the dips under that 50 point. And that would show us buying every time in September of 2020, as an example. And that is pretty much that entire region. Now, this is only tested against a couple of these times in history. So it would be a good idea to check it out. And this is by no means a definitive plan, but it's just some guides to help start to program if then statements. If the market passes through 70 on the fear and greed, and we happen to fall beneath 50, that might be a good buying opportunity. I'm not saying this is a definite, but it's something to start considering because the question did come up, what happens if we're in a bull market? Now, if you missed yesterday's video, check it out at the end of this video. There are also other ways that I look to get into the market, especially on swings or breaks of resistance. But for now, I'll leave that there and we'll just have a look at how the investment is sitting when it comes to Bitcoin. So this is a live price update here. Bitcoin price, call it around 49,000. And our profit is sitting around five grand. So this was at around uh, 12 entries. And that gave us $12,000 into the market with an average price of $34,085. So the return so far is sitting around 44%. Not too bad for a mechanical plan, which the goals here are to remove the emotions, remove the FOMO, remove the FUD. And that helps set up a nice, easy to use plan. It's not trying to buy the exact low. It's not trying to sell the exact top. This is just an overall bullish bias on Bitcoin 
as the market goes up. So let's have a look at some of the news now. The bullish narrative continues. Number of lost Bitcoins hits nearly 34%. So one in three Bitcoin potentially lost. So that's of the supply. Here's what it means. The article didn't really tell you what it means. It just essentially means there's less Bitcoin overall. But looking at the numbers in the past five months, long-term held or lost Bitcoins has risen to a new high in the past five months, about 7.1 million. And this comes from Glassnode data. Uh, this is the tweet here. So possibly one third of all Bitcoin is lost. We could probably think that some of this is in long-term hodler wallets. So it doesn't mean that it's necessarily lost, but it's just sitting there idle. That takes a lot off the market of the total 21, which means there's still two and a half million to be mined. So it's quite a massive percentage, which could lead to further supply shortages, which we're probably all aware of now. Let's have a look at the mining. And earlier when China was banning cryptocurrency miners, we were looking at Kazakhstan as being a country that they could start to flee to and set up the mining. And it looks like the nine signs joint venture for crypto mining plant in Kazakhstan. It looks like it is happening. So pretty decent plant. Plant will be able to provide up to 200 megawatts. The main thing I'm looking at here is that the miners have found something close to home in Kazakhstan, right? Rather than have to spend a lot of time setting up elsewhere. We heard news of the miners wanting to go over to US and set up over there. Something is a bit, bit closer to home here in Kazakhstan. The bullish narrative continues. Future belongs to cryptocurrency. Banks must embrace it. This is by Deloitte's. So 73% of senior executives at financial institutions fear their companies will fall behind in terms of development if they fail to adopt virtual currencies. 76% believe the, that digital assets will replace fiat money in the next five to 10 years. Interesting to th see the way the senior executives are beginning to think about cryptocurrencies. And of course, if they're having to get in, they have to go through a lot more processes than what we do when we just set up an exchange and start to buy, connect our bank accounts and buy some crypto. They've got uh, a few more checks to go through before they can actually do it. So it looks like they definitely want to be getting in. It's not nothing new to us, but the main point I look at for news, which you guys might be aware if you follow the channel, is to see what the market sentiment is doing. What is the narrative trying to tell us? The narrative is trying to start to push us back in that direction of buy Bitcoin. You know, Bitcoin's going to new all-time highs. Bitcoin's going to six, uh, six figures, you know, this sort of thing. That's what I look for the news. And of course, this is important to note as well. The Bitcoin bullish narrative continues again. I'm saying that at the beginning of every news item because it's what they want us to see. Try and find some of this negative stuff now. It, only a month ago, like we saw with the fear and greed plan over here, uh, a month ago, we were sitting at 23. A month later, extreme greed. Why are they doing this to us now that the market is already up so far? I'll let you decide that. And let me know in the comments down below. Do you think this is all part of a Wyckoff accumulation, distribution uh, type of schematic? And they're just trying to play with the everyday investor. So they start here with a 400 billion wealth manager. But then when you read into it, it they are a 400 billion wealth manager, but it's the commodities section. It's the commodities fund of the 400 billion, which is 164 million. So nowhere near 400 billion. And then it's only 5% of the 164 million, so about 8 million. Okay, so from a headline of 400 billion, we see that it's 5% of 164 million. Of course, 8 million is a lot. Like, we, we get that. It's, it's a decent chunk of change, but the bullish narrative continues. 400 billion. Let's move on. Binance rolls out mandatory KYC requirements amid regulatory wo woes. I would have thought this would fear, send some fear through the markets, but so far we've basically just brushed it off because it looks like Binance is just going hard on getting the NY or the KYC verifications compulsory and then effective immediately on all accounts, which I think sucks. You guys might have a different idea about regulations on cryptocurrencies. We're probably going to need regulations. I think that's known by now to bring more money into the space. But potentially with this is going to open up the doors to more decentralized uh, DEXs, decentralized exchanges, getting some of that volume for people, for investors that don't want to go through the KYC requirements. Now, we're going to, obviously going to need fiat onboard ramps for uh, getting into the DEXs. That's all going to come. I, I believe that is definitely going to come because that is one of the, the cruxes in the entire space. We need to get that filled. If someone can get that organized, I think we, they're going to do pretty well to get into the space KYC 
free. If you guys got ideas about that as well, I'm opening up the comments to you guys. I want to hear from you. Are you do you know of any good non-KYC fiat on ramps out there that you can go and buy a cryptocurrency from? Unlike your local Bitcoins, that is going to be a big key in my opinion. All Binance users must verify their accounts. So sadly, this is where it's come to right now. So let's move on to Solana and the booming ecosystem that we can see here. Three reasons for Solana's 90% surge. Nothing extraordinary here, stuff that we already know. Entire market is painted green, okay? Market goes up, a lot of altcoins go up. You guys know that. NFTs, NFTs go crazy. If you get an NFT on your smart contract, on your blockchain, it goes crazy. You guys know that, you've seen that already. You know, it's happened time and time again. It's not really a surprise to us. And then the overall growth of Solana. So the ecosystem's also building out. Uh, you know, we can see here, SBF, CEO of FTX, they, they're always promoting this and working uh, pretty closely with Solana as well. So they're able to build out the ecosystem. And I've got a few notes here, you know, companies and projects like Soulstarter, which are bringing on crypto projects into the Solana ecosystem. You've got Soul Farm. Uh, these things have done incredibly well in just about three weeks. So be careful with these as well. You can see it's like a dollar seventy, and then within a th three week period, it's peaked out at somewhere around seventeen or eighteen dollars. So a ten x in just a few weeks with a lot of this volume coming in around this bottom here. But just make sure we keep getting higher highs because at the moment we're just trending into a sideways uh, wedge here. So that's the sort of stuff just to be aware of as it gets its first pump. But it's still early days at a eleven and a half million dollar market cap. So a lot of these smaller projects which are coming on through projects like Soulstarter are possibly not financial advice, not buy recommendations, but what we've seen in the past, it has the potential, I will say, to boom quite quickly, as we can see on some of these charts. Obviously we've got to be a bit patient, maybe a month or two here, and then it takes off for a little 10X from the low, that is. More on the booming ecosystem of Solana, Chamath Palahapatiya, Social Capital invests in Solana-based Sabre protocol. Uh, Solana-based cross-chain stablecoin exchange uh, secures 7.7 .7 million. So why is this important? It's a stablecoin. This will help uh, solidify the ecosystem. So give some more grounding to it with its own native stablecoin, just like we've seen with Ethereum and its USDT, USDC. You've also got BUSD, which is on Binance, but of course on Ethereum. Uh, all these sorts of things help the total ecosystem out and we're getting this pretty quickly on Solana with a lot of major funding from heavyweight investors, industry investors. You've got FTX's, Tristan, Curve Finances, Julian, Terraform Labs, Jeff, OK Coins, Jason, Stacks, Ryan, like the big names from big companies in the space looking at Solana. All right, I I see that as a pretty positive sign for the Solana ecosystem. Doesn't mean I'm going to go run out and buy it this second from the video, but it just all goes to show me that there are the big names who are buying it. And then explains to me why the lows on Solana were coming in. You know, we were watching this, looking at uh, the lows getting higher. And then we saw the breakouts begin to form. And then the solid breakout above that sort of $38, $40 level as it broke this swing high and then the next swing high is at 43. So it's good to see that that news was there and we could see this coming about in fruition on the charts as well. So now to the potential rug pull here, Solana DeFi protocol Luna Yield, not to be mistaken with Terra Luna, goes dark with 6.7 million in crypto. So Luna Yield has disappeared taking 6.7 million. Uh, they're trying to get in contact with them. SolPad is another one of those smaller Solana ecosystem projects. The platform which launched Luna Yield uh, the, their IDO ha, has finalized its compensation plan for those affected. So they're actually giving some money back. And I believe from some of the tweets I was reading, it was around, uh, they were giving back about 60%. So that could be, that could change, but that's what I saw on one of those tweets previously. Um, so check that out. If you had been affected by it with the value of equal to 60% of the purchase amount. So that's where it is there. And lastly, the burn rate. We are burning 73,000 ETH. That's the total that we've burned so far in ETH. So that continues to increase day by day, hour by hour. So that's it for today's video, guys. I wanted to get through just a few of the charts and then get through some of the news on Solana, the booming ecosystem. That booming narrative on Bitcoin is the big one that I'm looking at, uh, especially as the price 
gets up to these new levels again. Everyone's talking about 50,000, 51,000. We're going to get back to all-time highs and you start to really see the strong bullish bullish shift in the news. So, you know, we we didn't see it so much at 28 or 29, $30,000, but of course, we see it all at the tops again. Is this the top? Are we going to go further before we see a correction? Are we even going to see a correction? What do you guys think in the comments down below? You guys know what my thoughts are from the previous videos. I'll chat to you at the next video. Make sure you've hit the like button and subscribe to the channel, bell notification icon. Stay tuned to the end of the video and check out the video links that are in the end card that you'll see in just a few seconds. Follow me on Instagram and on Twitter. Until next time, have more fun to get more done.